So welcome to the webinar where we'll be looking into some basic coding exercises. Um, I think we promised you seven. I will promise you more than that, um, but this is of course up to you. My main focus about today is giving you some, also some inspiration, but some exercises where you can continue from there um, into building your own, creating your own programming codes and sharing them with your students and sharing the learning with your students. And also for you sort of to start creating your own lessons um, in an easier way, hopefully. So inspiration and learning should be sort of the outcome from today. And uh, also with the focus on senses, with the focus on our uh, app, the Fable Face, and then some sort of basic uh, block coding exercises. And Jakob, he's uh, assisting me in any way. Jakob is... Um, working as an, in the editorial manager. So he is really experienced in Fable and he will be helping you also on the chat if you have any questions. Again, my name will be um, will be seen on the chat, so, but we've switched roles. So, um, yeah. so you know that I'm Shan and Jakob is the one writing the text or writing the answers. So if there's any or maybe interrupting you asking, you know, uh, if it's yeah. a question that, you know, makes sense for everybody, yeah. then I'll interrupt you and, and get you to answer the question. Yes. <laughs> and there's yeah. have one small um, question to you guys. Um, you might have some ideas of what you'd like to learn with Fable. Of course, I've planned the, the agenda for today, but if you have any great ideas or anything throughout this um, session, then, or afterwards, of course, but um, before we end the session today, please write your ideas in the chat if there's anything specific, because then I can sort of plan some follow-up uh, webinars or courses with you, um, and you might sort of have some of the similar uh, questions. So please do that, please. Um, write anything where you'd like us to focus on at, at some kind of next webinar. The next one we do have planned is next week at the same time, which is about children with special needs and how you can sort of set up a learning environment. It's more uh, talk about that than it is looking specifically at, um, at the exercises with Faber. So yeah, let's get started. I will switch to sharing my screen and um, show you the slides. And just to begin with, and then we'll look into what amazing things Fable can do um, with you. Okay. So here we go. I'll just share the screen. Um, these slides we will share with you also because I've put in some small links that might be helpful for you too. Um, so you don't have to look that much for, for specific lessons that I'm pointing out today. So this is what we manage, which I've just told you. Um, so that you know about best practice examples that you can use in your lessons. So uh, let's look at what this is about. So some of you might have seen the slide uh, and this is what we do today. Normally it's sort of, these are the benefits of Fable, but actually I want to show you this in action. How can we build a robot in seconds? How can we actually create something that solves real life problems? And you can see how well it is designed for learning and how easy it is to code and to program. Um, and again, growing with the users in this session more about how you can uh, put in progression and how you can actually uh, differentiate some of the tasks that we will be looking into. So we all know this also again, but I, I just need to sort of set the scene in a different way so that we say, okay, we know the why of being here. We know the why of putting robotics into lessons um, and we know what the whole goal of this is, of teaching the students the necessary skills. But I'd like to sort of look more on the how um, and the whole sort of learning environment that we have to stage uh, when going into class and when planning working with robotics. Because it won't be the same as when you go in as a, less, a language lesson teacher or a math teacher. This is a completely different setup. 
And here we um, we really like the idea of constructionism, where knowledge is constructed together. So when you set up a learning environment in class, you will quite quickly find out that it's necessary to set up tables and chairs um, as being part of group work where children, they can generate and develop their own thinking together. So Seymour Papert is sort of the father of constructionist learning. And this is where we, we like the idea of creating robots with sort of student-centered um, discovery and learning. Um, so this is really important when you sort of start planning your lessons. How would you like to stage the whole learning environment around it? So uh, this is if you sort of find this uh, didactical aspect really interesting, then uh, then you can read a lot more about Seymour Papert um, on the net. I won't dig deeper into it. But again, this sort of whole idea of knowledge, which is constructed together, is something one really sees when you see how students work with the robots in creating tools or trying to problem solve um so this is this is just the how the stage of what can we where do we have to create this learning environment to create these uh, amazing robots so some of the pictures you see here we will be looking into now um and getting some hands-on experience so the first thing i'd like to show you is how to build a humanoid robot um, and I've sort of put in, this is also a task that I would give the students, I'd say, I want you to create a humanoid robot and it has these four features that are necessary for it to become, for you to reach the goal. We want some sound, we want some text to speech, we want some movement, and we want some emotion by using the app um, and the favorite face. So this is where I've put in some links for you. And these links are to three different lesson plans, um, which you can visit when you've seen, when you get the, the slides. Um, they're on our homepage and they are in different levels. So you can work with humans and robots on a more sort of ethical level with the older students and they can create their, their tasks from there on. Um, or you can do sort of a, a more, fun sort of uh, middle school uh, robot where they have to build a pet robot or a future pet robot. And the third one is also an, a nice one for the younger students where you create a classroom robot. Um, and I, I'll write some examples down for you also at the end of, of the session. But again, this is something where you you ask them to create plays, you create dialogues, you can talk about ethical questions, you can create a humanoid robot with a specific function where you can ask them to create a cleaning robot, a robot with a specific service they have to do, create a best friend. Um, there's a lot of storytelling when working with, um, with humanoid robots too. So when you do that, um, these four elements that I want us to include are elements that you can use in further um, exercises too. So now just go away from the slideshow and we'll um, I'll stop sharing the screen with you and then we'll look at the robot in action. Okay, so when I get started, of course I do the unpacking. Um, I've got my lid set here where I can put the robot on and I can start building. I know it won't toggle anywhere um, and it's sort of set quite safe in this, um, in this yeah, lock in some way. Also, I've, I've already switched this one, the, hum, the hub into the computer. And the next thing I have to do is of course, turn on the program. So before I do that, I will build my robot because then we won't have too much switching back and forth. So to get started, the students may have different kinds of modules that they can use. So what I'll start with is creating my robot, getting it ready with a body. And 
you can hear it clicks very easily together. Most of you, I'm sure, have had your hands on, on Fable already. So it is these magnetic parts sort of click on easily. Then um, I make sure to turn this this way around. You can do it exactly as you want to. You can turn it this way if you want to instead. I just like you to see the color of, of the joint module so that you know what I'm doing. Um, so I switch it on and choose the green color, which is the same as my hub. And again, if you have several groups working, you can change it into the color that matches the group or that the group chooses to work with. This is again the channel that it works on. It's wireless and, um, and they won't be disturbing each other, the different uh, modules that will work like this on each channel. So now I'll give it two arms, which I prefer my robot has. This is the one you see in several pictures. And I also want Fable Face. Fable Face is the app that I talk, talked about two minutes ago. And it's for free. And when you now just when you fetch it down, it'll ask you. There's a small ID. It's really difficult to see, but you see it up here at the top. This is the, the ID that has to match the dongle or the hub that you have in your group. So as soon as I connect those with each other, you'll get the favorite face. So we're nearly getting there. I want the eyes to turn around correctly. And we've already got a sweet little robot. So now our job is to make it do the things that we want it to do. Um, and again, I mentioned earlier, if you want to create a classroom robot, it's really nice uh, having a robot that you've coded with the students where you talk about what is important for them as a classroom environment. They might say, we don't want loud noise or we like to be praised when we've done something really positive or we like to be greeted in the morning when we arrive in the classroom. And a, a robot like that is quite easy for you to create after the session here today because you can, you can do that as a teacher and say, this is your sweet assistant to begin with. And then the students can sort of start working with it afterwards, um, involving them more and more in creating their own robot. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll open um, Blockly and then you will see sort of I'll take it step by step so that you can see what I am building. So Fable Blockly, you can get into your device if you uh, have Chromebooks or if you work with, um, with MacBooks or PCs. There you go, I just press sounds great. I'll just start on an empty. It sort of, it, yeah, it saves what I've been working on earlier. So we'll just move that out of the system. And I'll just share the screen with you so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So this is Fable Blockly, as most of you have already seen. And again, I won't give you a big introduction to this part. Um, what you see is the, the block part of it. We won't be looking at Python today, but again, if that's important to some of you, please let us know. So there are different versions you can work with. There's both the Python version, which you can see in a second from now, when we've built something, you can see things coming up here, but this is the blockly version. We have a simple mode and the advanced mode. And you have all these different blocks that you can use from. Um, one thing is uh, the options that they change when you go from simple to advanced, but actually also the actions are different. I switch between them when I program. So this is, again, something you can do. You can ask the students to switch between them because they sometimes might need some parts from one version and some parts from the other version. So you see there's one action with the joint module in the simple version, and if I'm in the advanced version, you see there are several options. There will be three different ones. So let's start. We'd like, there were four things we needed, some movement, some emotions, 
we needed uh, some sound um, and the Faber face also, the eyes that we had to bring in. So let's start with an action. We want Faber to move, let's say, the one joint module that you can see at the moment, but you see the results in a minute. And uh, I'll set it. What I have to look at at the joint module at the moment is sort of check which direction it has to move, if it's in the positive or in the negative direction. So from where it is now, I can see it has to go in the negative direction on the joint modules that are called X and Y. You see there's a little minus or a little plus so that you can easily see which one, um, which direction to use. And again, it's um, trial and error. So if it doesn't work, and it doesn't do what I want it to, I have to change it. I'm sure you'll see that through the session in a minute. So now the next thing I have to do is um, also choose which, which joint module has to um, be the one taking action. And I want the one furthest away from me so that I don't get hit by the robot. And hopefully you'll be able to see it in a minute here. No. So, so these are the modules that you've been using, the light gray ones earlier. And the ones that are darker, they are the ones that you have in action now. Again, if you want more information, go up and look at the modules that the system has found, and you'll be able to see which ones are on and which ones aren't. So this is great information anyway for the children to be aware of this and also the, the hub so that they don't um, use anybody else's modules um, if you have several groups. And before I said, this is where you see the Python code on the right hand side. So just if you want to work with a more difficult version of, of coding, then you can work directly in Python too. And you switch and the, at the top here. So now we have an action. What I always say is just test it. Does it work? If not, you can hear it work over there. But if not, then you've done something wrong and then you change it again. So we've got some movement here. And what I'd like is now I've had it lift the arm, but I also wanted to do a small wave at you. Um, so this is something that I'd like to create in my code. But I also would like it to say something. So now when, when building this program together, I sort of I have to let the computer know or the program know when to do what. And then I should put in a logic so that I can meet, be more in control of the code. And this is where you can use um, the conditions, the senses to put in some conditions so that you sort of tell the program what to do when. So first of all, we have this movement and I'd like it to say something too. I'd like it to greet you. So again, I choose an action. I put in the speak block and there are several ways of putting in sounds here. You can either, you can create your own. You can see the actions here where you play sound file. In this one, you can, if you have a program, you can create your own sounds. I've used Audacity, for example, and it then sort of, you fetch the program, you have to save it as a favorite document and you fetch it from there in your folder. It's an, it's an easy way of, of working with sound files. And you can also fetch music files if necessary. But this is sort of one which is an easy accessible one. The other thing we will be developing very soon so that we can get some, some direct recording into the program. That would be really great. So, hi, my name is Fable. I'll just do a test on this again. Hi, my name is Fable. So you can choose the several languages that you want. And we'll keep this in English today. Um, of course, it's, it's computer generated. So it does have um, a sweet way of saying things sometimes. But this is anyway one way of giving it some humanoid um, a touch, the robot. So now um, I'd like it to sort of say something else or just to 
sort of um, do the little wave, as I said, and yeah, we could do some fun stuff with the eyes. So what I what I like is that I can sort of just copy what I've been doing here um, and say I am from Denmark, and then we'll do a small wave, and I want the y-axis to move a tiny bit forward so that it waves to you and has to go back again otherwise it won't be a wave right so into the position here what one has to remember is you have to put in small um waiting blocks what i usually say to the students is um imagine you're creating your own sandwich or your own burger and you, therefore, you sort of need the bread. You need something to sort of uh, stick the whole burger together. So this is how they remember the loops sometimes anyway. Um, so this is your sort of burger bread or the sandwich bread. These are sort of the taste you want to put towards it. The, the logics are the ones where you want to make it taste of barbecue or whatever. It's sort of always a good sort of fun thing you can talk to them about to make them remember storytelling is always good and then this is the salad the weight block please remember the salad it's always the healthy parts that we forget so please remember that because otherwise it won't read your code so i could try this but i also want these conditions and that is the ones i as i talked to you about before i want some sensors here because i wanted to do these specific things at a specific time so when you add these, you can choose which button to press. Um, let's say if I press the button one, this is the action it'll take, which is in the first condition. If I just copy paste this coding block and I press the, the key two, then this would be the next action. And in that way, you can sort of build together the code in with different sort of actions that you create where you are the one that puts in the conditions. It's a nice way of also working when the children work together, that one person is the one in charge of creating the action, the other one gives feedback if there's something that the robot doesn't do and so on and so forth. So that's quite nice to, to have this part also and the importance of it. So I'll just test it and then I, I will show you in a minute. So I'll just put down the giant module. I'll stop sharing. You see Fable. You see this one switched off. This color isn't on now. It goes in pause mode if it's standing still. So this is something which is quite good because the batteries keep on. So let's keep an eye on what Fable does. I press play, I press the key one. Hi, my name is Fable. And then I, I am from Denmark. Key two. I am from Denmark. I am from Denmark. Okay. So this is sort of a quick way of putting together a robot where you get some movement and you get some sound. But now we also want to include the eyes. So I'll go back sharing my screen. And Jakob, you interrupt me if there's anything, any questions or something. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, I think mm -hmm. I have uh, answered the questions uh, on the way. Good. Okay. Uh, there was a question about where the sound is coming from. Yeah. Uh, and I replied, in your example, it's coming from the computer, but it could also come from uh, from the phone, but that will, won't be the the sounds that you make yourself. It, will, it would be the sounds that is already put in the program. Yeah. So you could do both. Yeah. And the sounds that can are from the program, as Jagapi mentions, are these small sounds where you can sort of uh, you can put um, different kinds of sounds in, like it's sort of fun computerist sounds, laugh. There's a fat. There's some drum, elephant sounds. It's uh, the younger students often find this quite funny that they finish off their code <laughs> with a fat. So. <laughs> you decide <laughs> when to and, there, and there you can change yeah and there you can change to, to the phone right yeah exactly this is where you yeah. change 
the favor face, then it comes from the phone. Okay? That was a good, a, a small detail. Just deleted that. Um, so what you can also do is put in some expressions. That's what we need now. So I want to find the favor face blocks. I'd like three things in this. I'd like to set the direction of the eyes. I'll just put this in 45 degrees and it'll move the eyes to one direction. I also want to change the expression from neutral to happy because it's actually meeting you. We need happy days here at the moment in this Corona time. And I'd like to set the color. Sorry, it just swept in there. Could go underneath or on top to turquoise, one of my favorite colors. So now you don't see the whole code, but I will just make it a bit smaller for you. There you go. So let's see what this looks like when I stop sharing. Hopefully you can see the eyes, okay? I'll move Fable a bit closer to you. And then I'll start the program. And again, I'm happy I didn't ask it to move the, this side because then I'd be knocked out. So the first thing is I'll just put the join module down to see if I've done my job well. I press number one. Hi, my name is Fable. And you see it looks happy and it has become turquoise, the eyes. I am from Denmark. I am from Denmark. So... This is just a, a very small example of how you can create this social robot. There's so many things you can put towards it of movements, both arms if you want to. You can do several things with the eyes so that it sort of puts put together different blocks where you have more and more emotion on. I had one with um, where we had a topic regarding best friends and Fable came and said, Hi, my name is Fable. I miss somebody in this Corona time. And then it looked quite sad and unhappy. So you can really sort of create it into all sorts of humanoid uh, emotions. And again, you also see examples of students sort of creating and being creative with the robot. Because one thing is that you have the engines. But if you want to create a pet robot, you can be really creative, putting feathers on, dressing it up. Jakob and I made a Christmas robot um, we created sort of small Christmas hats and, yeah, gave it sort of a more human touch. Um, and you can also do that with the students. They find that really funny, especially the girls like it when they're allowed to sort of be creative more than just in the coding and in the programming, but also with the robot in hands. So I'll move on again. Um, I hope you get sort of just a small idea of these small examples that you put in of movement and emotions, the favorite face, um, the sound, and it sort of brings in together the whole picture. You could also put Fable on a spin module instead and have movement in that way. So your movement is used with a spin module instead. So this is also just to give you an idea of a quick little switch. This is the spin module. I want to put my wheels on. And you can actually make this one move around instead, which is sort of part of also the playful learningness that, that you can, uh, if you have a football game, for example, it's really great to include the face um, because it makes it more sort of, yeah, it makes it more fun. So this is also a movement that you can use and create a humanoid robot. So there are loads of different. It's just your imagination again that sets the limit of how you build this together. So um, now we've sort of, I'll, I'll step on, I'll go away from the, from the, the humanoid robot. Um, I'll just share the screen with you again um, and get back to the slides. This is multitasking. And I hope you sort of get the idea of 
how you could include this in small, let's say that you use the, the spin and you have two of these and you ask the students to create a dialogue. And this dialogue, of course, has to include sound. This again could be something they do themselves through Audacity or any other program or with text to speech. And by showing them the way of using the keys to press them as a condition for the movements, they can actually create the dialogue in that way that you plan when to answer what between the two robots. You can do small um, scenes where they have to create the scene and it's a theatre they have to do. Uh, there's so many different um, ways you can, you, can, you can use the humanoid robots. Um, so I hope this gives you just a tiny small idea. It's, it's a quick one, but um, the, the rest you'll see in a minute will also give you some more towards the humanoid robot um, where we can combine the different codes. So now I just want to bring the favorite face in again as not only being this uh, sweet uh, expression that we can play around with and change colors and emotions, but we would also like to use the technology of it. So I want to show you two different examples of how you can include the technology from the favorite face and where it would make sense to include it because it's of course maybe not as relevant when working with humanoid robots, but um, when doing more problem solving tasks, for example. So I'll show you how to use the tap position and I'll show you how to use the accelerometer on the favor face. Um, so what I'll do is I'll stop sharing the screen again and then you'll see how we get this started. So the favorite face in itself has a technology that we also have to teach the students about. Because one thing is that they use this phone for Snapchat and watching Netflix and whatever. We also want to teach them that there's a technology in this device that can actually be of quite big importance for them. So let them use it if they have their own and they can get the app for free. Um, you can create some really cool stuff. So I'll share the screen with you and show you some of the basics in how to use this accelerometer. So we'll just remove this and we'll create. Actually, just yeah. uh, just just a little comment is that you can if if you have the if you don't have they don't have phones they can also use if the if the school for example has iPads okay. yeah. you can actually download the fable face for iPad instead and then still use the and teach them about the 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 sensors in the phone or in the iPad yeah and that's really important because some schools do have um politics with the devices that that of course uh, hinder the children in using them. But also what we have, um, we've just been having these Huawei phones that have been used only for the technology of it. So you could also do that. Um, don't use sort of expensive phones. So why is this code necessary? And there's several um, things you could sort of talk about here. Uh, of course, it's necessary, as I said, to teach them about the technology, but where in which building example is it uh, relevant to use the phone? Um, and one could say that if you have, an, if you talk to students about where is it difficult to go as a person and you need something that is a remote control, then this would be a good opportunity to use. Um, so this is a way they could create a prototype that brings somebody water that you can't reach on foot, but you can reach with a robot that can actually access because it's smaller or because it can go where it's too dangerous for, for, uh, for people to go. Also, we had uh, a, a great um, example where the students had to create some healthcare products for elderly. I think I've mentioned this a few times, maybe some of you have already heard it, but they um, created with a spin module a robot that could bring soup to the elderly or um, feed them with a spoon. 
And this was this was really cool. This was a good project. And there was then feedback from this one girl who said, hmm, you could actually do this in an even better way by using the technology because she couldn't see the elderly sitting coding or pressing keys to make a robot move. So she's, the girl said, why not use the technology of the phone? And this is where it could bring in some good options because when you have the tap position or when you use the, yeah, on the phone with the X and Y axis, with very small movements, you can actually make something move. So if you have people that nearly can't move their fingers or their body in general, they can use this technology to actually make something move towards them or away from them or um, whatever function they want the robot to have. And also she said, put it on the, the foot of the older lady in a sort of a Velcro kind of band. And she said, if she moves the foot, then the robot will do the same. So this is, this is just, um, it brings some great creative ideas towards problem solving. So let's start building. Um, what I do is I want to, I want my, my phone to move the spin that is next to me that you can't see, but you'll see it in a minute. Um, oops. And on this part, we have to sort of make it understand that there's, you can build in, you can hear, it says click, you can build in these small blocks on top of other blocks, which changes um, the, the action. So what we want it to do is we want it to know that when we use the phone, the accelerator, the sensor, then it does a specific movement, the spin. So we get the, um, the sensor where the eyes, and we put that in here because this is the number of times in movement. I don't know. How would you say it, Jakob? How would you? Sorry? How would you explain my number five that I know works in? Um... You you haven't shared your screen. Haven't I shared my screen? No. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry, people. Now I luckily haven't built that much. See. Oh, that yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I did was I just remove this. So do you see this, the different blocks that I'm working with? Okay, start again. Yeah. I take the action where I want the spin module yeah. to move. Yeah. And that's what, yeah, you can hear this. Whoops, sorry. You can hear this, this phone call. Whoopsie. And there we go. You can hear the small clicks. And this is the, the um, this is what I have to put in to tell the, the spin module when I move the phone, when I use the accelerator on it, it'll do A on the A motor and B on the B motor. So this is the A motor and the B motor, the two wheels that we have. Jakob, I was asking about the magic number five. This is the speed that we set. I don't, I don't yeah. exactly know what the, but you should, again, you should, uh, you should use the trial and error method, but there is yeah. in, inside the Fable Broccoli, there is a, there is a, a, a cheating code, <laughs> you, you might say. Code. Yeah, so you, you could actually open uh, a, a code that is already made yeah. with the spin uh, that uses the accelerom accelerometer. Mm -hmm. um, but now they should actually learn it here with me, right? Yeah, of course. They know of course, how to of course. use it. <laughs> maybe we should. We, you can. Uh, you can show that in the end, maybe. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'll do that. So what I have to be aware of here is now I've just copy pasted this block into this one. We need the x axis of the phone, and we also need the y axis of the phone. And you see, there's a drop down here, so you can actually here already change the different parts of the coding if you want to. So you can go into directly using the tap position. This is also important because now I'll put on my spin and need the green color. And it should be, if you saw the change, I don't know if you're aware of that, that just changed from two to three modules found. So you can see it found the Q4H, which is the ID of the spin module I have next to me. So this is what I'll set 
for movement, okay? And now again, we need to put in a condition. So if true, it'll do this. And our loop repeat forever so that the program knows what to read. So I set it to play in a minute and then I'll just stop sharing my screen. This is the finished code to make it move. So what you see me doing in a minute is that I will play the code. And when moving the, the phone, the auxiliary mesa, the Y axis and the X axis makes the robot move. I've got a very small table here and I don't want it to tumble over. Usually we say to the students, please do use the spin module on the ground because otherwise it might fall off the table and break. So normally remember to do that. So this was just using the phone to make it move. That's one way of making the, the, the spin move. The other way would be, as you saw earlier, where you create the blocks one by one, create a condition that if you press the specific key, you make it move. But also you could then change the code in a quite easy way where you say, I want to use the tap position by using the drop down bar instead. And maybe even sort of changing this part and saying, okay, we'll do a quick one. We'll take the joint module and I'll just click this one directly onto the X axis and the Y axis. I'll delete this one and switch it into using the joint module instead for you to see how using a tap position would be. So this is a quick, small, it doesn't have to be more complicated. And again, when you create these codes, for example, with your students, ask them to save them every time. You can share them with, with the students um, because you have your folder where you have everything shared. Sean? Yeah? Uh, maybe you should be aware that you have take the tap position and times it by five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, maybe you should take that part out so it's only the tap position. Because then we could... Yeah. <laughs> You can actually just um, put it down a bit lower if you want to and lower it. It should work also, right? So now I'll just show you how it is if I, again, have a maze. I'll just stop, stop sharing the screen with you. I'll put my joint module on the box again. And I have, for example, a maze that I'd like to solve. And with the students, when solving this, you can either teach them as we've been through block by block, and then they can solve the maze, but you could also use the accelerometer. Some of you might have also seen the last time that we did follow the leader, um, which is also a way of solving a specific uh, task like the maze. So imagine that this is a solar cell and you want everything, you have 50 of them and you want them to move in a specific direction if you haven't automated it or what you want. Um, so I'll just put this on. It's on the green version and I'll press play. And it doesn't work. See, now we have the great situation of sharing this with you again. And then you can see what's gone wrong. So this is trial and error. So what I normally do is either I go back, Jakob, I'll just go back what I did earlier and then see if this one works. What I would suggest is taking the if do out yeah. So instead of taking the math part back, I would just remove the if do and just take the, I, I, the move block directly. 
and we'll do it even more simple. The first thing that you mm. ask the students to do is go back and see what your changes were. So that would be the first thing. And if it still doesn't work, then check which kind of module has your system found? Is it the right one? And when I look at it here, it's 22G. And if I then look at my code, I can see I've put on the wrong module. So that's ah. my mistake. So here we go. We'll go back. We we'll put these in. And this is always, it's, I love the troubleshooting part because this is where you yeah. see how easy you would be able to find the, um, the problems and the students themselves when working with the uh, Fable. So again. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, look here. Hopefully it works. Oopsie, I already touched my phone. So, this again is the movement that I, I don't use the movement of the phone like this, but I use the tap position. So very small movements. If I'm elderly again, I can actually make the robot do what I want it to. Exactly. So, this is just another way. So now you, you, you've got several ways of, um, of using movement. You can put together the blocks. You can also use both the tap position, I've only showed you two of them, and the accelerometer on the phone. So, there's one last exercise that I hopefully, well, I have to speak quickly here, I can see that. Um, <laughs> we want to work with a spin module. Just to show you a tiny exercise, I'll share the screen with you again, which includes the sensors. So actually I have uh, prepared it, so we don't have to start from the beginning, um, which is quite well when we don't have that much time. So I'll share the screen with you again. And what I do here is I want to work with the colors of, of the joint mod or the spin module. So I'll open a project. And here again, like if you've saved some of your projects, one always has sort of favorite projects here. Um, I actually had one that I would like to show you, which was this one. And this is interesting because I will be using the the, the spin module, and I will be using the color sensors. So this is again a condition that I've put in where I wanted to sort of check for a specific color. Um, so now I'm just looking around the room for something red that is large enough. Maybe I will change this into yellow, but we'll see if it can check this. I had a red flag a minute ago, but I don't have that with me at the moment. So there's several places where I want the change to be. When it sees the color red, it'll also change the hub. So this is the, the small one that you saw earlier. You can also ask it to change something else, the color of the, the small symbol on the module. And here, this is where it will change the symbol on the module. I want some facial expression on it. And I also want some sound. And this is where I've put in some sound myself, where I've, um, with Audacity again, um, yeah, made a small, a small sound file. So this is sort of the first small block that I've put together. Then it continues. I'll just scroll down for you to see the same, actually the same system I've built together. If it sees the color green, it'll do everything that I've put in here. If it sees the color yellow, it'll do something different, okay? So I've both put some movement, some expression, some sound, and some, yeah, some coloring in. So I'll just stop sharing the screen for you to see what happens. And again, you can, you can work with the sensors um, where you can check for different things. So there's so many options that you can look into when working with a spin module. Because the spin has, I'll show you that on the slide afterwards, uh, several sensors to include. So I'll just stop sharing this one. 
And now hopefully the color I have is enough. I'll press play in the program and I just have to tell it which kind of module it is. So I'm so sorry, I just have to do a change. If you have um, several classes and groups where you work, it's really nice to teach them how to do variables because they might have different modules from time to time. And when they have different modules, it's just an easy one when you create a variable to change it in one place and nowhere else. Um, because now I'm sitting here and changing it a lot of different places where I've used this uh, spin module. But I can show, show you in a second how to create a variable. So let's um, just do this. I'm ready now. So you see, it's put, it puts on... I love the color red. And the reason why... Oh, I'm that's it, great. <laughs> the reason, I don't know... That's why we want it on the floor. <laughs> and maybe we can get the color yellow also. I love the color yellow. So... What I did when I created this code was actually to put um, colored tape on the table. And that's why I coded it to continue moving because I wanted it first to react on the red color, then on the green color and on the yellow color. And this is sort of an easy way for you to change it is that you, you just put the sensors to the bottom instead. So you have the sensors here and you can just put them in the bottom instead. So you just put the wheels on here instead, and then you can ask it to drive. I just have to hit the... Then you can ask it to drive following the color instead. So that's why it continued moving at some point because I'd used it for that. So that's for, just for you to be aware of that, the sensors can also be put in the bottom just turning it around so if I show you I don't have that much time left and you will be seeing the slides afterwards anyway Do you see this I also now? just promised that uh, we will share that uh, program that fable program that you just used yes of course yes <laughs> have I shared the screen do you see it no you no. haven't you see me of course we can share the programs with you that's no problem um I can even you give you homework if you want it, then you can just do some <laughs> some of the things that I didn't manage here. Okay, so we'll just do the presenter mode here. So what you see here are the different sensors that you can also work with proximity so that you can use the distance sensors. And here again, you can create some really interesting exercises. I've put in some of them here as links where you can go in yourself afterwards and see some of the easy exercises and the more advanced. Again, use it for problem solving, use it for, um, for creating mazes where the students have to sort of work themselves through it with uh, team working around their, their spin module to to get the best possible of the time of uh, going through, um, through a maze. So there are loads of different ways you can work with the spin module because of the sensors. And this is what, it's a really interesting tool um, to play with. So just quickly to say something, just to sum up, um, getting started tasks, I would use the joint module um, to just sort of play with the movements where you can include the throwing arm where you can ask the students to throw the ball. You can use the joint module and the small maze, again, sort of to show them the different ways of creating or solving that maze, both using follow the leader, using bit by bit blocks as we showed you, or you could actually use the, um, the technology of the phone to solve that. And then the spin and the movement um, used with the keys, that's a really good feature if you want to work with playful learning, you want to play football with two spin modules, then using the keys as a condition or as a sense is a good way of, of having some playful fun. And then also the Fable Face Expressions, 
it's always nice for them to get that humanoid touch in a robot uh, as one of the first getting started tasks. So if you bring them through these, and these are the things we did this hour, then you're actually sort of very well off because they can create quite a lot from there. Then you can start going in, sort of creating a direct human robot, a humanoid robot. Like I talked about the classroom robot, new friend and assistant and so on. Um, then it's more sort of a creative process. Then you can sort of go into the next phase, phase which I would do, working with problem solving tasks and sort of engineering models, creating prototypes, working with SDGs as a topic, or working like I did today here, telling you the example of the healthcare. Working with COVID, we had some, some um, African children through our partner who um, tried creating a robot that would bring medicine and how could it color sort, sort of using the sensors to color sort uh, medicine um, and bring it out to people now that we weren't allowed to be together. So that these are sort of different ways of working with Fable and a good way of, of using progression. And as I said earlier, it grows with the user and you can work very differentiated because although you give them some specific tasks, they will all come out with very, very different results. Some will run quicker, some will run a bit slower, some need really sort of um, specific work they have to solve. Some you can give ready-made codes where they just have to switch some things. I've also given them codes that I've, I've put in sort of... Um, in the getting started tasks, I've made sort of six stations of different activities where I've put the codes in. I've just um, sort of uh, scrambled them so that they had to sort of find a new way of putting them together and, and uh, program uh, the robot to do something specific. So this is just a way of, of remembering how you can plan your lessons with the uh, Fable. So these are just some pictures of which some of you may be seen earlier. And I'll also send this one, the last uh, webinar we had this one too. These have some links to some of uh, some really interesting lesson plans. So Jakob, I know time is running up. And yeah, um, that's right. <laughs> I just wanted to give space for some last questions. I can see there are only three minutes left. Yeah, maybe we should also uh just tell the the cheating code for uh oh, yeah. for with, uh, yeah. working with the spin yeah with the accelerometer yeah you can open examples here um so you have both joint examples and spin examples and which it's one? called remote control is I it think. this one yeah yeah so there you use the accelerometer and then they they made four variables uh, telling that, you know, it, it takes into consideration about the accelerometer and, you know, uh, times it by 10 and then minus by, yeah, by five times. <laughs> That's a more so, advanced code, I must say. It's yeah. more advanced, exactly. But I think it works pretty good, yeah. but yeah. yeah. But that's a cheating one. But this is a good one if you want to yeah, that's right. <laughs> check both if you have some children that are very forward in, in coding, some might be. You can go in and, and give them some more difficult conditions to work with. Um, and again, analyzing codes is also quite, quite fun for some students. So are there any other questions here at the end um, of the webinar? And if not, then please... Um, write anything in the chat where you think it would be really nice if we could learn more about anything that I opened up to today. Um, but I hope I could give you a picture of, of different elements and how you can sort of um, grow from that. So I hope you will copy, you can check the webinar again, copy what I've done in practicing yourself with your robots at home. And I'm sure you will be creating some amazing stuff um, and your students, hopefully, too, because they are the most important ones in this picture, right? So I was just shortly, this is the throwing arm I mentioned earlier, just if some of you might not know what it is. Um, and yeah, it's always really good to include competitions when working with robotics. 
I actually just want to mention two at the end because in between the arrows I showed you before, put in some really cool competitions, ask the students to put some squares on the floor, you put squares, and put all sorts of different small things around the floor, and then ask them to find these things and put them into their personal squares, and there's a competition of who collects most elements from the floor, or who hits the glass or the net um, at the most precise way by coding Fable to use the throwing arm. Um, this also a slide regarding exact this activity, which I will share with you too when you get the slides. So yeah, that was it. I could continue forever, but please again, I hope this was helpful <laughs> and thank you. For there has been a lot of comments that uh, people are very happy about it. That's good. Great. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Feel free to uh, reach out and we'll help you in any way. Either Christian, my colleague, Jakob, Rege, or myself, we will be very helpful to, to continue the support. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Take care, Thank guys. You. Stay safe and bye. Bye. bye.